Last year, I bought an $800 manual transmission Volvo V70 that was in desperate need of an engine replacement. I had very little mechanical experience other than watching some YouTube videos going into this project, but it was such a rewarding journey to put a new engine in this car and later drive it thousands of miles. In today's video, I basically want to just share an ongoing log of maintenance and fun performance upgrades that I've done to the car. There's been so many small issues to work through and some of them I still have not figured out to this day. But I'm having so much fun and learning so much along the way with this whole project. And I just want to keep this maintenance log going to keep people in the loop and share the realities of this project. But before we get into it, I want to backtrack to where the last video left off. I considered the car somewhat finished and decided it was time to take it on its first proper road trip. Unfortunately, around 200 miles into the trip, I lost power steering going down the highway and when I parked the car at a gas station in the middle of nowhere, I noticed a huge puddle underneath the car. I think what happened was the vibration from just driving for the first 200 miles down the highway must have shaken some things up and the high pressure power steering line came loose. It literally shot power steering fluid everywhere. On my alternator. With just a crescent wrench, I was able to tighten the high pressure power steering line back onto the pump and that fixed the issue. I was also very grateful that the gas station that we parked at sold some generic STP power steering fluid and it was enough to fix the car, take it on the rest of the trip and make it home without any more issues. Today is an exciting day because for the first time in this car's history, I actually have some performance parts that I wanna put on it. Not just maintenance and not just replacing broken stuff, but some actual fun parts that should make the car a little bit more enjoyable to drive. Now I should mention, it's a daily driver. It's not ever gonna be fast with the NA engine. And that's kind of the point. It's reliable, fuel efficient, um, simple to work on. But I don't know, part of me, you know, it's just how we are, I guess. You just wanna make some things better. And I have some really cool parts for the car today. The main one being this cat back exhaust system. I'll tell you more about that in a second, but I also do have some other maintenance items that I want to do. I got to replace this reservoir. Let's see, I got a new power steering hose. There's the reservoir, a little o-ring for it. Crush washer for the coolant temperature sensor, because check this out, that baby is leaking bad. Unfortunately, when that little incident with the power steering fluid happened going down the highway, I think the pump was actually running dry for quite a while because at 70 miles an hour, you don't really feel the lack of power steering. It could have been running dry for two miles or the last 150 miles, and I have no idea. All that I know is after that incident, the power steering never really felt the same, so that's why I'm replacing a bunch of these parts in addition to the fact that the reservoir was just leaking, I think a new power steering pump with fresh fluid that was meant for Volvos instead of STP stuff will really fix this all back up. The power steering pump itself is really easy to do. I always struggle though with the serpentine belt on this car. I don't know why it's kind of a weird routing. That usually takes the longest for me. The power steering pump replacement on this car felt amazing. With some new fluid, the steering feels super good now. The next thing I wanted to chase was an idle issue that I've had since the beginning with this car. It happens after driving the car for a while once it's nice and hot and I come to a stop. The engine feels like it almost stalls out for a second and then just hunts around for the idle for like 30 seconds and then steadies out. 
For this diagnosis, I had no check engine lights to work with, so I decided to just go after the one code that I had in Vita, which was for a missing clutch position switch. This car's engine computer does control rev hang for this car so that it makes the manual a little bit more easy to drive, and I figured if that switch was missing, then it was very possible that that could be causing some issues with the way the engine was behaving. When I looked at the clutch pedal, I found exactly what Vita suggested, which was literally no clutch position switch at all. Hector's gonna guess what this cost. The top plastic is just $125. Dude, you're close, <laughs> 140. Oh, dude, oh my gosh, they would, they would charge you. What would this cost on a Honda? That's probably like a $25 part if it was a Honda. But things only got even more complicated because after I put this switch back into the car, I saw that it didn't clear the Vita code and then I realized that the previous owner had crossed the two wires so that the car would still start without one of these switches installed. After I fixed this issue, the code did clear in Vita and it actually made quite a big difference to the way the car behaves on and off throttle, but it unfortunately did not fix my idle. I now had no codes left in Vita and really not much to work with, so I started looking at some live data and saw that my MAF sensor was a little bit off. I replaced the MAF and although it did improve the values that it was reading, it also did not fix my idle. Like I mentioned before, the idle really only gets sporadic after the car heat soaks for a while after maybe 15 to 20 minutes of driving. I noticed that my intake air temperatures on my live data seemed a little bit too high for what the weather was like outside. So I went looking in my intake and I found this valve that is supposed to redirect air on cold starts so that instead of sucking in cold air from the outside world, your engine is actually sucking in hot air from the exhaust manifold through this pipe that goes to the back. I think the purpose of this is to heat up your throttle body on cold winter days, but here in California that's not really an issue and I think this valve is permanently stuck closed which means I was basically running a hot air intake. I deleted this valve system so that the hot pipe is constantly closed and the engine is permanently forced to use outside air. And although this seemed like a plausible explanation for my sporadic idle when the car got hot, it also did not fix the issue. Although this hot air intake, the MAF, and that clutch position switch were all real issues that did need to be fixed on the car, I did feel like I was kind of chasing my tail with this idle a little bit, so I moved on to something a little bit more fun for the time being, and I'll get back to this idle at the end of the video. Instead of fixing real issues with my car, I'm doing the first performance mod for this car, which is some BC racing coilovers. They're a super streetable coilover that will lower this car a little bit and just make it handle that much nicer, especially considering this car is on original Volvo suspension from 2002. Baby guy, big guy. The big guy always does it, dude. All right, suspension update. It's been, you know, happening over the course of two days, but the fronts are completely in. They look great. I obviously have no idea what the setting is right now. We'll have to drop the car to see that. And then in the back, um, the springs are in. They're not bolted in yet. They're just kind of sitting there. I'm going to bolt in the shocks now, tighten up the springs, and then we'll set the car down, see what the height's like. Here it goes, dropping it down on the new suspension for the first time. Oh my gosh, yes, dude. I think once it settles even a little bit more, that is awesome. Once again, instead of fixing my idle, it was time for another performance mod. And I'll give you a proper look at the coilovers later at the end, but it's time to get rid of this rusty 
quiet exhaust that came with the car. It was literally hanging on by a single hanger because the other ones were just rusted off. So I figured it would be nice to replace this and also unlock a little bit more of that five cylinder sound. So my buddy Hector came over and we got to work on this. All right, we got the exhaust off and all it took was one, two, three, four power tools. A full catalog yeah. from Home Depot. Thank you, <laughs> Home Depot. I bought the new exhaust from Europe and not only should this be a nice factory style replacement, but the rear muffler is a little bit sportier and it should give just a little bit more tone, which is perfect for a daily driver. That looks so sick, dude. Start it. Start it. Before we start this, I was doing a quick oil change and has anybody ever had this happen? I bought this brand new from AutoZone today. And when I open this, literally no seal and it's just dirty oil. Someone returned this with dirty oil in it and I bought it. What the? I just want to say I did a terrible job at recording the coilover and exhaust install. The next eight videos I have filmed for this channel are amazing, but I don't know what was going on with me that day, but I just wanted to kind of update the vlog and kind of share where the car's at with you guys. The exhaust is a little too quiet for me. I think I'm going to have to turn that up a little bit, but that's for the future because I'm still chasing that idle issue. And that's kind of been discouraging me a little bit with this project. And I just want to be honest with it because... I think I watch a lot of these YouTube videos and it's very clear when people aren't honest and when the car isn't actually being driven. I do drive the car, but probably not as much as I would like just because of that idle issue. Like it feels like there's still something seriously wrong. So I felt like I was chasing my tail a little bit there at that point and I got just frustrated with it. So I decided I'm going to bring it to a professional Volvo specialist mechanic who knows a lot more about these cars than I do. And hopefully that diagnosis fee might be a little bit of money, but it'll save me money from just throwing parts at the car. So I brought it to a Volvo specialist, right? Like this guy specializes in these cars. I told him everything that was done to the car and he gave me some more information on what he thought was going on. So he said it's a vacuum related issue, which is pretty scary. I mentioned to him I did the PCV box and he said I should drop the oil pan and clean the PCV passages because he thought those were clogged. And his other suggestion was replacing the map sensor in the car. So I did both of those things. I didn't film it, but I dropped the oil pan the passage was not clogged at all. And I did also replace the map sensor and still no fix. But I guess I did learn that the issue was vacuum related, which is probably not something I would have figured out myself. So that was beneficial, I guess. I found a way to make the issue happen on command because right now it only happens when the car is hot. But I found that if I pump the brake pedal a few times and then let go of the pedal, it does the same issue. And I'm assuming that's because it's using the brake booster, which is vacuum operated. I don't know if it's still maybe a faulty PCV box or maybe I installed the PCV box wrong myself. I'm a little bit stuck and that's really the only issue left with the car and it's been a little discouraging, but I'm slowly chipping away at it. This is exactly what I signed up for. I'm really excited to dig into more live data and really expand sort of where the limit of my diagnosis knowledge is when it comes to fixing a car like this. This issue is no longer as straightforward as replacing brakes or doing something simple like an oil change, but this is really gonna require some more learning from me and some more studying into how vacuum systems work and what kind of things contribute to this. 
So while I chip away at this issue myself, I'm gonna switch gears a little bit on the channel. And in the next video, I wanna introduce a new car, which is my S60R. Essentially the same platform, just without the wagon and about double the horsepower. It's a super fun car that sounds amazing and that video will be out in the next week. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.